Today we're talking about geocaching using your Android phone and how to get started with that. We're using a product called Backcountry Navigator, which is available in the Android market. First thing you want to do is, is set up your pocket query. And if you've been doing geocaching for a while, you've probably already gotten good at doing some pocket queries. But you can find this at geocaching.com site in your profile on one of the premium features that you've signed up is the pocket queries. And in this case, I'm looking for a place around Battleground and uh, you know, up to 100 geocaches. Important thing to pay attention to here to make this all very easily is you set the output to go to the email address, which you will check when you're on your Android phone. Um, in my case, it's a Gmail account, so it could be myself at gmail.com or an email address that you will check on your phone. We're still going to be in GPS exchange format. That gives us all the formatting, the clues, the descriptions, uh, so that we can find the caches. And we're going to include this pocket query name in the download file name just to make it easier for me to remember. Submit this information and if, if you've set it up such that you get an email that day, uh, you will get an email uh, usually within an hour or so and you can check that on your phone. Here I received an email from geocaching.com with the files that I need information. I found that this email has two attachments and if I went through this text to read through here what those files are, it would actually tell me what the difference is. The bigger file you're finding is usually the one that has the, uh, the actual geocaching waypoints. For some queries, you'll have an additional GPX file with supplementary waypoints. They might tell you where to park, where to start your hike, find a trailhead, that sort of thing before you actually get to the caches. You'll probably want to import both of these. I'm going to start with the bigger file since it has the geocaches. In Gmail, you see these two attachments here, and I can push the preview button. And it begins fetching that attachment. And Backcountry Navigator is uh, registered for this file attachment type of GPX. And therefore, it's going to want to import this. And we can import this into an existing trip or a new trip. In this case, when we're talking about a trip, we're talking about uh, one adventure you're going on. In this case, you might want to name it according to your query. And uh, I'm naming it according to Battleground Lake. And that is a collection of waypoints that you're going to see in one journey. You push the start button and it is in progress now of importing that file in, into a trip file that you can then use in Backcountry Navigator to find those waypoints. Once it's completed, it will automatically go to this screen and we're zoomed out quite a bit. So we're zoomed in quite a bit. So let's Let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at what kind of waypoints we have here to find. And we're seeing that there's there's a lot of waypoints around here. In particular, I'm looking for you know, this area here around Battleground Lake State Park and surrounding area is something somewhere where I'll probably be geocaching. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can use these keys here or pinch and zoom to, to zoom out. Right now I'm previewing a section here of the map containing a lot of these geocaches. And I would like to make sure that I have all these available to me when I'm going to geocache. I'm not counting on cell phone service. I want to make sure I have all these topo maps here available to download. To do that, it's giving me a reminder I need to mark an area. So I'll toggle this button here, and most important area here is the area surrounding Battleground Lake. I can make a little rectangle there. 
um, just in case I want to check out some of these geocaches just northwest of there I'm gonna make some rectangles around that too and they can overlap that's okay it's not going to download anything more than once so we can start a download and most popular map source which is also the one we've been previewing is called mytopo.com we can zoom in up to level 15 there so we can begin this download but while I'm at it I'm also going to take a look and another popular one is the color aerials for the USGS which gives us two more levels of zoom up to level 17 we can also start that download at the same time and you see we've got a couple of these ready and going we're done starting the download and the indication you see that the downloads is starting you see a notification in your notification area it's already finished with the topo maps you know, some of them were already downloaded already but now it's working on downloading these color aerials which is all of the United States up to resolution about one meter per pixel and oftentimes it is more up to date than the satellite photos in in Google Maps but it can be helpful to have another view of the data where we can zoom in we can see a little bit more from the air of what we're doing to find these geocaches now back when this completes I'll have a notification that download completed as we come back in here we can see this this folder indicating that we're in offline mode that these maps are stored on our storage card uh, clear this selection and take a look at, at where we're at we're here seeing several caches here surrounding battleground lake state park and for another view of the same data we can switch to the other layer which we've downloaded which is the USGS color aerials I'll switch to that here and from here we can kinda we can zoom in a little bit farther and we can kinda see the lay of the land as seen from the air we find one of these geocaches that we would like to find we can long click and then we get a little bubble of information about that cache you can also open up this dialog and see a little bit more about the cache with the HTML description telling us a little bit about which matches some of the area we're looking at where to park we can also see the recent log of people who found this cache somebody found this as recently as July 15th so it's probably still active if we get lost with all that description we can see the hint and it's 80 feet or so uphill from the tree one important thing we can do with this cache is we can use the go to button and then we can start uh, heading towards it right now we're we need to go about negative 20 degree bearing and we're 11.8 miles from the cache since we're still at home if you see this on the compass screen uh, you can see that our top of our compass is automatically set to where we need to go we need to line up this red and, and purple arrow here in order to align our screen with where we're going you can see the view here on the map if I start using the GPS to navigate we see a line coming out of here showing the direction that we're headed the map is rotated but we can see we need to turn over this way and head a little bit uh, to the northwest in order to find this cache and you can see that uh, with a heads up view as well uh, line going to where we need to go to hit, see the cache I hope this has taught you a little bit about geocaching with your Android phone and how you can do that uh, best way to learn more is to try some of this yourself and you can go to the market now in Android market and look for backcountry navigator demo and that will give you a chance to try it out for at least 16 days to see if it works for you for geocaching or for other outdoor adventures. Thank you.